Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you the exact steps you need to take to not get your Google Merchant Center account banned. Okay, you do not want to get your Merchant Center account banned because once it does get suspended, uh, it's going to be very hard for you to get it back. So the easiest way to avoid this is just to take the steps to ensure it never gets suspended in the first place. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to not get your Google accounts banned. Now, a lot of you, if you have been advertising on Google of late, you'll have noticed that Google's been really cracking down, particularly on Merchant Center accounts, right? So the Merchant Center has its own set of policies, as does the Google Ads account, right? The focus of this video is going to be on the Merchant Center, given that the focus of this uh, presentation and course will be on shopping, okay? So these are the most common reasons I see for the bands, and so to avoid obviously getting banned, do not do any of these things I'm going to talk about right here, okay? Or do the things, right? So missing legal pages is a big one. And on top of this, it's not just the missing legal pages, guys. These need to be clear and not confusing in any way to a customer. I've actually had refund policy pages be flagged just because my policy was a little bit vague as to how a customer could get a refund, right? It needs to be crystal clear with simple steps there. What do they need to do? How, what's the length of time? And so sometimes using a standard template is not going to make, you're not going to necessarily comply just because you've taken someone's standard template, even if it is the Shopify one, right? You need to go in, have a look at it and actually simplify it and make sure that it actually is what your refund policy is. On top of this, you need terms of service, a privacy policy, super, super important, uh, and a contact us page, right? A bit more on the contact us page in just one moment. But yeah, guys, if you're missing these legal pages, uh, this is probably the number one reason I see people get banned, okay? And this also, this bit here, although it's its own little flag, so within the Merchant Center, you will see a red kind of message appear at the top. Uh, this is often a common reason, but the misleading or untrustworthy promotions ban also often relates to some of these things, right? So not enough info on the contact us page is another one. It's super important that you have, you need two, not two there. So the number two of either phone, email or address. Okay. So you need two of those. So you need a phone and email an email address, phone and, and, and so on and so forth. You need two of those. And on top of that, I'll add to this, these need to match what's in your Merchant Center, what's on your Google Ad account, what's on your website and everywhere else. Because again, for the untrustworthy uh, promotions ban, this is often due to things just not adding up about a brand, right? So if you're trying to get away with using a fake uh, address or fake email or fake phone number, it's just not going to fly anymore. You need a legitimate one. You can go out and purchase uh, a phone number that's virtual uh, and you ha it's easy to get an email, right? So if you don't want to use the address, I recommend having all three. Maximizes your chance of not getting banned, but that's just me personally. To, to comply, you need two of these and that, that untrustworthy ban is often due to this, right? Selling banned products is the next one. I would familiarize yourself with the Merchant Center policy, there are a bunch of products there that are just outright banned. Things like gun, CBD, uh, all sorts of things like that, outright banned. Uh, anything can, containing cannabis and, and so on and so forth. There's, there's heaps of products that are just outright banned. Go through that list, make sure you're not selling something that is banned. My recommendation is if something is ingestible, goes onto the body, could potentially you know burn someone, anything that's deemed high risk, I just would steer away from, right? It's easier to just not sell these products. Uh, on top of this, if you're selling certain products that may fall under it, so if you are making claims about a product like instant weight loss, fast weight loss, and you've got nothing to back it up, all those kind of flags will tell Google that you are untrustworthy and those products and potentially your whole account will be banned. The next one is inaccurate shipping costs, okay? So your shipping costs on your cart need to match what is in the Merchant Center. So within the Merchant Center, remember we went in and we set up the shipping costs. These need to match. If they are different, you can get your account banned or flag to be banned. Uh, the next one is missing info regarding available payment methods, okay? You need to tell people under their terms and conditions what your available payment methods are. Easiest way is to, at the footer of your page, have the icons of the payment methods you accept I also recommend having them in your cart as well. 
Inaccurate pricing is a big one. So Google, on top of looking at what's in your feed, will also scan the schema, so the website code. And if these two don't match, right, you could be done for misleading or inaccurate pricing, okay? So make sure that there's a lot of apps out there that edit your themes code. And when you do that, if you make a, a price update, then often this doesn't flow through. And so you need to make sure you're going into the Merchant Center regularly Go in there regularly and have a look and see, are there any error messages within there and just remove them, right? You'll see those messages, they will be read within the Merchant Center and you'll be able to go in there and do your best to have that clean. Go in there as often as you possibly can and just make sure that you don't have those error messages in there. Get rid of the yellow ones and the red ones as well. Now, number seven is really, really broad and I've seen a wide range of things and to be honest, it could be a course in and of its own. Basically, misleading practices are you're doing something that is untruthful or something that is intended to mislead, okay? If you have fake reviews, this could be misleading. You may be banned for that. If you have countdown timers that aren't real, whether it is in cart or on the website itself, on the product page, you could be flagged for the untrustworthy ban, okay? Uh, if you're making claims about products that will be a little bit vague or unclear or you're trying to mislead, or if you have heaps of things that are on sale all the time. All of these things can lead to bans, guys. And if in doubt, just don't do it. Pr try and run this like a, a real business. Do you think that someone like a Walmart or Target would intentionally try and mislead their customers consistently? Pretty much most of the drop shipping community and the smaller online stores try to do this all the time. I'm telling you now, it's not just going to be Google that's going to be stepping up on this, guys. It's going to actually be governments as well. They're going to eventually find out that everyone is misleading people. People are being ripped off or they're not getting what they want. And this is a big problem, guys. Everyone that's contributing to it will, it's going to come to an end at some point. And my recommendation is if you wouldn't like it done to you, don't do it. Okay. Don't mislead and your account will be fine. So guys, I hope you found this useful. In the next video, I'm going to show you what to do if your account actually does get banned. Okay. So thanks and stay tuned.